Hey, we back here in 2020 again. Welcome to yes. Fox Soul Hi. and more Real Talk. I'm Donnie Arell. Mike Hill is out tonight, and I'm filling in for him is the lovely Gwendolyn Osborne. Hi. Yes. Tonight, we are going to be covering a question that has been talked about many times for generation to generation, especially in the black community. It's a question that when it's posed to a group of people, several people in that group will have a strong opinion about the topic. And we're ready for it, right? Yes, we are. We're ready for all these strong opinions. Tonight, we're unpacking whether or not black people can be labeled as being racist. We can. Yeah? Hey, we, we can, you yeah. think so? I know. You think so. it can be racist? Oh, yeah, I've been racist a lot. Really? Yeah. yeah. I don't know about that. Yeah, I've been I think sometimes. I might call it prejudice. Yeah, I'm prejudiced. There we go. Yeah, I'm, I'm it's prejudiced. prejudiced. I'm not racist, right, you guys? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm yeah, prejudiced. Yeah, you can't be racist to your no, own people. I'm not people. racist. I'm not not to my own people. No. Sometimes you know, sometimes you got to be prejudiced to your own people because they be tripping. Oh, I want to hear about that. Okay, we're gonna what get to it? it. Yes. Okay. So, well, before we get started, I want to invite everyone to connect with us by tweeting at Fox Soul TV or call us at eight six six Fox Soul or one eight six six three six nine seven six eight five because we're live and we want to hear from you. Please welcome Dewan Brown, Cindy Wallace, and Elise Cizek to the show. Yay! Hi guys. Nice to meet you. Hi. How you doing? Okay. Well, this we're gonna just dive right yeah. in. Get them, Gwendolyn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, get them. Because I hear there's many there's different opinions here about racism, and um, on this topic, I want to know how you define racism. Let's start with you, Devon. Dewan. Let's go with how you feel about racism. Well, uh, racism is a practice. That's what ism is, the, the suffix, ism. Race is the differences in who we are. Ism is the practice of maintaining the system that divides us. Okay. And so racism, that's racism to me. Racism is the, the way of controlling the social hierarchy. Mm, okay. I like that. <laughs> okay. okay, Cindy, Cindy, how do you feel? I believe, you know, if you really boil it down and you just look at the simple definition of racism, racism is the belief that one race is er either superior or inferior to another race based on characteristics of that race. Mm. And how that manifests is a different topic, but that is the definition of racism. So you do believe that it happens between two different races? Yes, right? Okay. Because there is the belief that one ethnic group um, is superior or inferior to another ethnic group, and that's, that's a little bit different, just a little bit. Okay. Because they convolute ethnicity and race together, but truly racism is defined as one race believing that another race is superior, inferior, based on characteristics that are inherent with that particular group, race. Okay. And Dewan, based on your definition, why can't black people be racist? Black people don't have the economic resources to be racist. <laughs> Racism, racism is a practice. Like as, when we can test this out, as a black person, I can't go Say to a again. white person and put them in jail off my word. Mm -hmm. I need another white person to validate my word. Mm -hmm. Now, a white person can go and say, "Hey, that black person did it," no matter how much money he That's has. That's right. Mm -hmm. And that black person can then go to jail. That's the ism. That's the practice of racism. Racism is the, the denial of wealth and resources based on skin tone and based on mm -hmm. race. Race, at the end of the day, is something that's made up. It's not real. Right. And so the ism is a practice of something that well, is Well, what real. about the wealthy black yeah. people, then? Well, are they it, included in that? The, well, the wealthy black people are included in that. Okay. Um, Bill Cosby's in jail by someone who looks like Steve Nash, and she didn't have any resources, and she put him in jail, whether wow. he did it or not. And so uh, I'm, not, I'm not here to say he did it or not, but... Yes, that's a, that's a whole nother case. <laughs> yeah. well, There's I, a I, lot I, of people. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know whether he did it or not, but what I'm saying is you saw someone with no power take down someone with power mm -hmm. versus when we look at some of these other th people that we see out here with power, people, without, well, people that are black can accuse them and get them taken down mm -hmm. without the validation of a white person mm -hmm. to go with what they said. Get them, Okay, so based on what you're saying, that black people can't be racist with one another, 
but if one is wealthy, then it means they could be racist? Well, I would say right, black people can be prejudiced towards one another. We can be bigoted. We can be evil. We can be mean-spirited. We can say mean things. But we can't practice racism on other black people because, on other people in general, because we don't have the power, wealth, or resources to do it. Okay, let, let, let's ask Cindy. Okay. Let, what, what is your opinion on it, Cindy? I'm sorry. Oh, Cindy. I'm Cindy. 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 Donnie. I'm, I'm sorry. Cindy. 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 Racism is the belief that one race is greater than another, but it's operating on a construct that's created, especially in America, it's a white supremacist base. Like, mm -hmm. that's where we're coming from. We're, we live in a white supremacist country, and that's not an opinion, it's a fact. Um, but the way that racism manifests, it doesn't necessarily mean that because I am a biracial black woman, that I can't be racist against black or, um, any, I mean, any other uh, non-white race. So your um, mother's white? What was that? Your yeah. mother's white, Cindy? I mean, Elise, your mother's white? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Your mother's white? Uh, my father is white. And my and my and mother's black. So and we've been married for 39 years. They just celebrated their anniversary. Wow, yeah, that's yeah, incredible. So, so do you guys have any division in the home about racism? Um, the, the conversation in the home was never really about race. Um, it came up in certain situations. Um, like, get it, like how to fill out our college applications because when I was applying for college, there wasn't there was an other box, but there wasn't a biracial box, and I didn't know whether to pick black or white. And I always had that wow. had that um, dichotomy of like, which one do I pick? Because I was raised equally by both parents, and actually, I was raised closer to my white family, um, and my the black side of my family is like you know on the other side of the country, and we only saw them once a year. So the well, way that I do you not yeah. then believe that black people can be racist? I believe absolutely that for me myself, I know what racism looks like, and I know that I've done it. I know that I have been oh, really oh. racist in oh. my in my past. I know that that's the way that I was raised, oh. and I know that um, that it's taken a lot to heal and unlearn and unpack all of that. Um, but the idea that I couldn't be racist because I was black is what kept me in that box. Okay, oh. kept me from healing for it's so very long. Very interesting because. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I'm also the same as you. My mm -hmm. mother is black, she's Jamaican, mm -hmm. and my father is white. Mm -hmm. um, he's English and Irish. And mm -hmm. um, when I came to America, my mother was very serious at 16 years old, and I came, about letting me know about that box. Mm -hmm. And she said to me, uh, well, when you're in America, when you've got one drop of black blood in you, girl, you're black, mm -hmm. so you better check that box. And I had to learn that at mm -hmm. that age, at 16. So, um, it, you know, and then from there on, I've learned being in America that I am a black woman. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. But you know I embrace that. Yeah. But I, 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 it's interesting to me that you got to the college age yeah. with your mother and, and living here in America, mm -hmm. Wisconsin, you're from, yeah? Yes. And that never came about before that. Um, it did come up occasionally, but there was never a time that my parents sat me down and told me that I was black. Oh. I know, I mean, obviously, like, in American history, I know about the one drop rule. Like, I know about how that, how that works, but there was something in me for so long, which is something that I now recognize as being a weakness and being something that was a detriment to my character, a detriment to, the, to my personality and who I've grown to be now. It's a challenge that I had to overcome because I didn't want to only see myself as one race. I wanted to equally see myself biracial and let both of those they right. exist together. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it was a really hard thing for me also because I, um, growing up in a society where everyone around me is white, looking up to people that, like, seeing the popular girls in, in my school, the way that they dressed, the way they did their hair, um, the things that they said, the things that they did, I wanted to be just like, like them. them. And what you about mum? Did she ever say, well, let me try to find you a black baby doll so you can see what they we look did like? black baby dolls. You yeah. did. Mm -hmm. What did your father say? Yeah. My father didn't really Because <laughs> <laughs> if he didn't really he, talk about it. <laughs> here's why I'm asking Lisa. Yeah. On the Mike and Dye show, we keep it real. Mm -hmm. We get down yeah. to the nitty gritty. I'm excited you know about it, yes. So yeah. I want to know also what... Also on the Gwendolyn and Donnie yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on the Gwendolyn show, you know, because she's here. She's a good host. Yes. I want to know what was your father saying? Mm -hmm. What type of nasty things about black people was he saying? Oh, nasty things about black no, people. No, no, because you said that you identify with your mm -hmm. white side. Yeah. So, I know in, in, in some homes, Absolutely. people say things in the homes that they wouldn't say in the street. Absolutely. And we know that because black people, we do it. And that did You know exist. what I'm saying? That so did exist. I want to know, because we keep it real here, yeah. what would your father say? <laughs> um, black and white dysfunction 
looks mm -hmm. different and was talked about differently in my household. There was equal amount of dysfunction on both sides, but the way that we talked about the white dysfunction was so different. Tell me about it. Yeah. It was um, compassionate. It was like, oh, poor so-and-so. They have For the a white drug people? Problem. Wow. Poor the to white the white people. The family. Wow. Yeah. And what about um, the black people? And the, the, all of my black uncles that were in and out of prison were looked down upon. Oh. Shamed. Mm -hmm. How dare he? Like, why mm -hmm. is he going to prison? Like, I wish he would just pick himself up, get, get his act together. And that's how it was talked about in my household from both of my parents. Mm. Cindy, I'd yeah. love to hear what you have to say about that. I feel like you have a lot to say. You know, I just, I think I too don't look maybe on the outside biracial, but my mother's Chinese. Mm -hmm. My dad is, is black. Uh, my parents divorced when I was quite young. So I grew up in a very Chinese home with a very Chinese wow. mother. I What's speak fluent, <laughs> I speak Cantonese. I understand wow. Cantonese, mm -hmm. but my mother, um, you know, she's old now. She was born in 1937, but wow. I grew up with, I know, she's been around and um, had a very interesting life, um, but that's a, a whole other story. Right. But my mother was very clear. She would sit me down as a child and say, people are gonna look at you and think you're a little black child. Okay. Wow. Right? They're gonna not know. What age were you when she did that? Um, probably my, maybe in the third grade. Okay. Right? Right, so around eight, nine? Yeah, around okay. eight or nine. Okay. And they would sit there, she would sit there and say, remember always that they're gonna look at you and they're going to make these assumptions about you, that you're not smart because you look black, wow. that you're wow. not, that you are poor. But that's a, back, that's back a in the day. big assumption, yes, right? That, but yeah. this is what she would tell me, that they're gonna assume that you come from a family that uses welfare or food stamps, right? Wow. That's what my wow. mom would say, and she would say, you aren't any of those things. You can be whatever you want. Remember, you have Chinese blood. You can accomplish whatever you want to accomplish. You do mm. not have to conform to what people think of you are. You are just as smart as any, anybody Maybe. else of any other race. I didn't grow up believing that because I was half black, right. half Chinese, that I was somehow a victim. So do you believe that black people can be racist? Yes, because I believe that racism is not an action. Racism, boiled down, is a belief. Mm -hmm. And black people can have that belief. It is not just racism, that belief is not just for white people all day. They've taken it and run with it and seem to have perfected it, right. but it exists in all um, <laughs> different <laughs> races, races, right? So it, do you two both then disagree with Dewan? Yeah. yeah, I do, because I don't, I think that racism is a belief. How it manifests through prejudice, discrimination, political systems, um, you know, housing covenants is the actions, right? It's discrimination based on race. The, the act is the discrimination, the, the reason why somebody is being discriminated on, it's race-based. I believe you are inferior particular race, so therefore I am going to act to disenfranchise you in some no. way or another. The mm -hmm. one, man, I need to know what's your thoughts on yeah, what she said. Yeah, what she said. To me, it's a practice, because this is a practice that we can date back to 1640 in the Virginia colony, mm -hmm. race going into law. Oh, it mm -hmm. wasn't just someone saying, okay, we don't like them black people, you can't work for me. Right. It was saying, let's put this into law. With the color of your skin, you cannot own property. It's a systematic you, it's a, thing. It's a systematic thing. It's when we look, at, okay. we look at this, people talk about after slavery, 40 acres and the mules. We didn't get our 40 acres and the mule. But they don't talk about the fact that the Homestead Act was passed mm. where white people got 160 acres. Mm. All they had to do was sign their name on the list and you go ahead and get 160 acres to fill out the West because of the color of your skin. Right. Now, if you're black, you can't get this land. If you're black, you can't get these rights. So if, if racism was just an opinion, I can deal with you not liking me. Right. Hell, I don't like midgets because I'm scared they're going to fall and hurt my knees. Wow. But I, I'm not going to go and say all, <laughs> I'm not wow. say all doorknobs need to be seven feet tall to deny them rights from getting in the door. <laughs> well, oh. one, we're going to go to the audience <laughs> off of that, okay? <laughs> We got to call them little, little people. people okay, to okay, okay. Yes. My bad. My bad. This is Fox so. yes. I'm fat, so I'm not sensitive. I'm bad, my bad. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay, so no. audience, audience question, what's your name and what's your question? My name is my name is Michelle, and my question is, Michelle. as far as the hi, usage Michelle. of the, hi, um, as far as the usage of the N word and the many facets that it can be used, um, how do you feel about that? 
as far as it connects to racism. Let's ask Being that. Yes, a black person can use that word mm -hmm. and a white person can use that word. Um, yeah, I'm not trying to pick on you, Elise. I'm not trying to pick on you. I'm not trying to like, The only way that yeah. I can grow is to be uncomfortable, so okay. I'm happy with it. Um, I love that. Ooh, I love that it. was a great one. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I don't use it. And the yeah. only time that I do is when I'm quoting someone. Um, and it's a necessary quote. Have your parents... Um, oh, I'm sorry. I learned about the N-word in my fifth grade class. I had a teacher... I'm not going to name him, but I want to. Please not. Um, <laughs> but I mean, uh, he's not cut. He's not no, here. Was he white he or was, black? He was white. Okay. And okay. He, was, he was a bigot, and there was no doubt okay. about that. He showed up two years in a row in blackface for Halloween and oh, got away God. with it. Wow. Um, dressed as Gilbert Brown from the Packers. That's not a lie. I heard that. um, there's pictures. But anyway, he uh, handed out a piece of paper to every student in our class of someone holding a sign with the N word on it. Mm. Wow. And keep in mind, there was me. One, two, three. five black kids in my whole class. Mm -hmm. And like both, because like, they were like, it was split. So like in my whole grade, I mean, in my grade, in my school, in fifth grade, five black kids. And, um, and he's like, this is a word that was used mm. <laughs> to be discrimination, to discriminate against black people. And you don't teach that word to a, like a class full, classroom full of white kids. Mm. What's How did um, you take that at that so time since you weren't I really, really identifying but as a black I was really girl. uncomfortable with it. And it was, it was like, I, I don't think that I should, anyone should be saying this. So I took it home okay. and I asked my mom. Okay. And my mom said, if Good anyone ever uses this word around you or at you, Excellent. you have my permission to hit them. <laughs> I love it. But I want to ask you, did you ask your dad? Uh, no, I didn't. Why no. not? Um, see, you know, that's a really good question. I knew that that was, my, uh, that's a really good question. Why didn't I ask my dad about that? Because you knew he was racist? No. A prejudice? Let me keep okay, 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 okay. asking okay. questions. No, I think, I think it's really good. I think it's, yeah. I think it's wonderful that you're calling out, that you're calling out my dad is racist, because that's not, a, that's not a perspective that I've thought of. Okay. I, I look at, I don't look at racism and someone being labeled a racist as being like a brand that they cannot unlearn and that they, it's like with them forever. I believe that it's something that I've carried with me for a long time that I like grew a lot of shame about and then just like, it basically grew a callus over my racism. I'm like, please don't anyone see me. I'm just never going to have a conversation that, right? about it. Yeah, but it was also my own manifestation of it, like how it grew and how like through my experiences, these little seeds started to grow, where they took root and how I allowed them, where I watered them. You know, my sisters, I have, I have two sisters mm -hmm. and like my older sister would completely, fully, 100% disagree with probably everything I'm saying right now. Oh, because she's, Cause she's um, still she's not, black. She's not identifying as black, or she No, is? she is, totally, okay. absolutely. Okay. And she's never had a problem with that. Um, and, like, that's always been something that was really comfortable for her. For me, it wasn't. I was also a really uncomfortable kid to begin with, just desperate for somebody to like me, and I just, like, wanted certain people to. But let's to go, going back to your um, calling my dad a racist, which is uh -huh. fascinating. There, um... I never heard that word come out of his mouth. Okay, okay I got a confession to make. Mm -hmm. I want to know. My mother was married to a white man when I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was probably around seven or eight. So you remember. You know, and I remember this. Yeah. But I never wanted to remember anything about him because I seen him in the bed with her. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Ooh. And I was... <laughs> I know that's right there. No, no, no. And, and I'm going to tell you what I said. Yeah. I ran to the door, and we on Fox, so I said, y'all in there doing the pussy. Nah. <laughs> Because so I, heard, yeah. I heard mowing and growing, and, and I took that image out my mind for the rest of my life. Me and my brother and sister, we ultimately ran him out, out the house, and <laughs> they got a divorce. But I'm just telling you, that was my experience from growing up. And I, you know, I was like, and you're crazy. from And you're from Los Angeles. I'm born and raised. He was yeah. in the hood. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? His name was Ron. Yeah. <laughs> well, you never saw Ron again, right? Never saw Ron again. At seven, how did you know what the moaning and groaning was? That's because oh, you we know. Took, in the hood, I mean, I didn't know what the moaning and groaning was. You know what I'm saying? That's what we were doing. Well, I want to ask uh, Cindy, how have you ever experienced racism yourself? You, my, at, growing up, my I grew up in Richmond, California. Okay. Right on uh, off of Cutting Boulevard. My and I, my tormentors were not the white kids. Really? My tormentors were the, the black students and the black wow. kids. I would come home and, you know, tell my mom and cry that these kids were bullying me and calling me chinky wow. and making fun of my accent or my funny lunch and, 
you know, asking me all these terrible questions and I'd cry and my mom would say, you know, I can't go to school with you. So you need to suck it up and, and figure out how to deal with this. Wow. And so, how did you deal with it? Uh, what words <laughs> and being just okay. as mean and if there was physical touching of me, I would touch back. I remember uh, Gwendol uh, Guadalupe and Angel were like the I was worst. Say, if there was a girl named Gwendolyn <laughs> there too, I am so sorry. Guadalupe and Angel <laughs> okay. were my worst tormentors. And my two best friends were Mora and James. And they were white, and Guadalupe and Angel were Hispanic, Hispanic and uh -huh. one was black. Wow, oh, it's interesting right? how you remember that. I do, because they were so mean. So and I, mean. I have the same experience. So mean, right? Yeah. And same. I remember being, I went to Catholic school, yeah. St. Cornelius Catholic School. And I remember being in, in mass, because we had to go to yeah. mass and them asking me, do you know what soul food is? Do you know what soul food is? And I'm like, it's food for your soul, like when you go to church. Because right. I, I grew up did. with a Chinese mother, right? right. right. And then it, it, that just, they took that and ran with it. So mm -hmm. for days and days, they were like tormenting me about it. Mm -hmm. uh, for I, I don't want to be disrespectful to Dewan. He had He wanted to follow up on that question. Yeah. Uh, that I asked her, so yeah. what were you going to say, boss man? I'm about sorry. The question about uh, the black people using the N-word. Right, yes. Okay. For me, I, we got to look at what language is. Language is just, is just a symbol. Mm -hmm. whatever, wh whatever value system you assign to it is what it is. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes down to the word, to the N-word, nigger, nigger, niger, mm -hmm. these are all <laughs> words that have been going around for tens of thousands of years mm -hmm. before the European came into Africa. Bastardize the word and flip it back on to it. Oh, man. So, yeah. thank you for that if, knowledge. If, if so, what happens is people have the Europeans' version, their their emotional response to the word versus an African mo emotional response to the word. Right. The word has a rhythm. Black people, we got rhythm, nigga, okay. nigga. It's just a rhythm that we hit it with, and we know the context, and we know what it is. Now. Every culture has a word that's derogatory within their culture right. that other people can't say. Right. Mm. The only difference is we got the rhythm, so we put it in the music for us. Y'all just happen to like it and get mad that you can't say it. Wow. <laughs> so that's what it comes down to. I understand those who have the emotional response to it yeah. and who don't like the word. And I'm not the person that argues, say use it or not use it. But don't tell me not to use it. Because I don't have that European definition of what an N-word right. is. I got my definition, and I'm a god. And that's how I see it. Okay. Well, we actually, we have, we, we're so excited here that we've got a caller in named Jerome. And we want to hear what Jerome has to ask us. Jerome. Jerome. I know he's black. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am black. <laughs> yeah. So um, my name is Jerome Tremell, and I'm black, of course, and I wanted to comment on the whole idea that black people can be racist. So first of all, black people cannot be racist, especially not against white people, and especially not in the United States. Like, racism implies power, and yes. black people in America typically doesn't have power when it right. comes to government, court, policing, transportation, right. media, education, politics. And right. believing that black people can be racist is also believing in reverse racism, which was started by white people to um, make them seem like they were victims. Yes. And believing that reverse racism exists, you might as well believe that Santa Claus and the damn Easter Bunny is it. <laughs> mm. <laughs> okay, all right, Thank Jerome, you, Jerome, I love that. Yeah. So, so let, let's get down to a little bit of nitty gritty then. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between racism, bigotry, mm -hmm. and prejudice mm -hmm. for all of you guys? Yes. And I want to start with you, beautiful Elise. Alicia. <laughs> <laughs> um, racism. I believe is actually based on the the social hierarchy that exists in America, the way that we uh, that we exist in it today. All right. So it is a white supremacist, or white supremacy. Um, so racism for you know someone who is um, not white to be racist against someone else who is not white. I agree that that's possible. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that it's racist for anyone to be ra to be racist against white people because they're on, like the social hierarchy the is always right. yeah like they're they're put at the top of the heap, always. And there, until that changes, um, I don't believe that it's possible for, for anyone to be racist against white people. OK, Cindy, Thank let's you, talk Cindy. about prejudice then. You take, you take prejudice. What's the difference between prejudice and racism? Well, prejudice, prejudice. Sir, wait, my definition, mm -hmm. as I said, that right. racism is a belief in your, your particular race being superior to another, mm -hmm. right? Prejudice is usually a feeling, either real or made up, 
um, and most of the time negative about a particular group or person mm -hmm. based on characteristics that are really not within their control, right? right. Or um, or characteristics that may not that may be stereotypes, right? That may not be truthful characteristics. Absolutely. So it's not necessarily that the prejudiced person. I mean, it, at the end, it, it all can be based on race, right? This race-based prejudice. But the idea, right? There's prejudice against gays and mm -hmm. lesbians, right? Mm -hmm. so a, a, a negative feeling towards them, where you hear people say, "I don't like." Um, the LGBT community. Right. I don't like gays. So towards a group of people. Group of people. You know, I don't like gays, or I don't like, I don't like um, Hispanics, Hispanics, right? Yeah. For yeah. for a particular characteristic that yeah. may or may not be within their control. Not I don't like Hispanics because I, as a black person, yeah. feels that my race is superior to them. Right. Right. I just don't like them just because an individual opinion. You'd say. Yeah, it is just an opinion that a, a, and it can be an individual or a group opinion, but I don't like a particular group of people or a particular person because there are characteristics about them. Understood. So you feel like your mother was prejudiced when she was talking about black people, welfare, and we get on the That's food stamps. That's a good stamps, one. I wanted to you know ask what I'm saying? that. Yeah. You feel like your mother was prejudiced? I mean, yeah. Yeah. look, Absolutely. I'm not going to, I'm not going to deny that. I mean, I grew up in a very Chinese household, Chinese yeah. people. They are probably some of the most prejudiced people that I know. Oh, really? There's what xenophobia, yeah. there's prejudice, there's stereotypes that at all exist because they grew up in a homogenous society. And Have that's you all ever that they talk to her about that? About her feelings and her yeah. thoughts. Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. I yeah. talked to my mom about many things, but they grew up in a very homogenous society where they didn't have a lot of contact with other ethnic groups, right? Everybody looks the same. Do, do, do you feel like she hated your black side? No. No. Mm -mm. Oh. I'm, my, I'm say, my mom's golden child. She loves every single thing about me. Okay, we have a uh, prejudice. Prejudice just means prejudge. Mm -hmm. And that's human. Yeah. If you don't have autism, you're going to prejudge. <laughs> all, all autism is the inability to prejudge things. Mm -hmm. You know, so you're gonna prejudge things. People pre People think I can eat a whole pizza, but I get four out of two slices. Mm. <laughs> pisses me off because I can't use my fatness. Um, <laughs> then you have bigots. Bigots are people who don't like you just based on I don't I don't like you. You get people, your rednecks, your people in the KKK that they don't have any resources to right. do anything. Mm -hmm. They just don't like you because of the color of your skin, and they talk bad about you all day. Mm -hmm. right. And then you're racist. A lot of times we think racist is, is just the, the clan member. No, your racist is your judge. Mm -hmm. The racist right. is the school teacher mm -hmm. that says, and put that child in special education because I don't want to deal with him. Mm -hmm. That's your racist. Because they have the power they to do the that. They have the power and the practice. Right. And one thing that I do, I, you know, I work in the school system. I work in the education. And you see racism applied all the time. The black kid, you're going to get expelled. For what that kid might not even get a snap on the wrist for it, and that's the difference. Can I, can I, ask, can I say something? Because I, I want to get my beautiful co-host involved in this, because she's from England, and she was telling me some, some beautiful things back and telling me wh how it is in England. Could you explain that, how it is in England? Well, it's, it's, it's a class system growing up there. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel um, direct racism as a child. Like, I would, there were no name-calling, but mm -hmm. I will say this. I was calling myself half caste mm -hmm. and not recognizing that that was actually derogatory mm -hmm. to myself yeah. because everybody called, every, they called themselves half caste. What if does you that were mean? half white and oh. half black, you are a half caste. And so I, when I came to America and I was living here, my mom was like, that is absolutely disgusting that you've been saying that about yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just as bad as calling yourself a nigger. You don't want to so, say with that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Because let me describe it. Racism is the European casteism flipped on the side in the color. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. in European casteism, you had your knights, your nobility, your, your noble class, yep. and your serf class. Uh -huh. They basically took that program that they had in Europe that was already that was already familiar to Europeans, mm -hmm. flipped it on the side, and color coded it within law. <laughs> and so when you so like when we come into these discrepancies between mm -hmm. black and black, yeah. when people mm -hmm. say black people could be racist to nut to another, that's nothing more than a prison fight. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. that right there is something that I could even trace that back to law. If we go back to Louisiana in the early 1700s, whether you were free black or enslaved black depended on the texture of your hair. Yeah. And so this was the thing where wow. they, they would say, no, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a Negro, I have straight hair. Yes. Yes. So now black people have arguments over straight hair. Good but that was, a, that was a survival fight 200 yeah. years ago. Yeah. We definitely that got have to down. get into that, too, because yes. that is a thing, right? Exactly. Yeah. We talk about how, good hair how people were the good hair and the bad hair and, and the house Negro and the, and, the, and the field Negro. Yeah. But we have another caller uh, named Tracy. So we want to hear what you have to say, Tracy. Okay. 
Hi. Well, um, I, hi, hi, how everybody doing tonight on the show? Great. How you doing, bro? Oh, I'm doing well. I just want to um, reply to this comment um, that they were talking about racism thing. Three years old. And, uh, on my family back, back, back on his back. I just want to say this comment about racism starts within like the household. Your family hasn't been taught about love. You must defend the concept of the concept of what racism yeah, is. So like. I'll hey, Tracy, it's a little like, bit, um, it's a little bit splotchy. We can't really hear what you're saying. Turn down your TV, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Can you back, call buddy. us back, Tracy, please? Because it sounded very interesting what you had to say. All right. All right. So, Cindy, do you feel at all that all white people are racist? No, I don't feel that all white people are racist um, at all. I mean, okay. I, I, I have plenty of friends of all races, and I, I do not believe that all white people are racist. I mean. There's this discussion here of, of what he just said, talking about racism and how it's a European concept that has been flipped over. But we, we, this idea that one group is superior to another based on race isn't only from Europe. I mean, right? right? Let's see, the, Egypt, the Egyptians enslaved the, uh, the Jews, right? Because they believe that they were the superior race. So that's their exodus is the Jews leaving Egypt, being freed from slavery by Moses. All right, okay. so they were, they were, they were, they were slaves, right? And that concept, that idea mm -hmm. that we can enslave this group, is because our group, our people, are superior, right? There, so one seems to want to yeah. really say yeah, something back to, to that. <laughs> so we gotta hear what he has to say. Let me know where I'm going. No. Egypt, by the time of that, that supposedly that they were there, that was during the time of Ramses II, and there was no time, there was no data of, of mass exodus during that time. And at the time we talk about the Jews, we're talking about the time they're black also, Whoa. and they weren't enslaved. When we talk about the pyramids, the pyramids were built by engineers, masons. That's that's high science right there. You're not going to have a slave do that. That's math. Yeah, and so. There was issues like when the Assyrians came in, the ish, and it, there were the Hyksos, and there were the different invasions in Africa. Yeah. But these were people who invaded Africa who got kicked out. Oh. This wasn't no people, no groups of people who were enslaved. That's what they talk about. That's a story that's taught about in the Bible. But we cannot find an accurate historical record of that. This was during the 18th dynasty. This is during the time of Ramses II, Ooh. and there was no slavery. There were people who now, at the, at now, what happened at that time? If you lost the war, you had indentured servitude that you still were able to marry into the, 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 the dominant class, and you still had all the rights and privileges of, of the dominant class, but after you served your servitude, you went back to where you had to go. So that story right there about black people enslaving black people, there is no record. You can go to Australia. Australia has a 50,000-year record of indigenous black people, not one thing of slavery. Yeah. You come into wow. the indigenous Americas, no records of slavery. Oh, now, you do know. have people who got in conflicts, but no, not chattel slavery, no. I don't know if you heard, no. Elise, was a, you know, Elise is a musician. Did you know that? She's no. a singer. And, and she did a really a good hum after Cindy as well. <laughs> so I do want to hear what no, you have to I, say. Um, because the belief that it's possible for a white person to not be racist in America, I completely disagree. I believe that every single white person in America is, has internalized white supremacy within them, and yeah. that is not something yeah. that can yeah. Like including your dad. Uh, absolutely, yeah. totally, okay. totally, including me. Your dad. Honestly, okay. that's that's what I've been le unlearning and unpacking and like trying to heal from is recognizing that that's a big part of how I grew up. That's a big part of me. Mm. And so to heal that, and I believe that for anyone to heal their own racism, the first thing we have to recognize is that everybody, everybody in America right now, yes, it's 2020. Um, Ten years ago, we were laughing at the same jokes that right now would get someone taken out of their job. We were all a part of that. Yeah. And so if we, if we want to hear, what I'm saying is that every single person in America, because we live in a white supremacy, we have white, like, it is a part of, of our hey, country. And you, know, and you know what's crazy? Ourselves. We've seen how racist America was when the O.J. Simpson trial came. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Right. We've seen everybody was split, and boy, it was black against white. If you said something about the, the, the young lady that died, and OJ, we were like, mm -hmm. we were split, divided as a country. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we can really. Uh, and to piggyback off what she said, yeah. there, if you could look up the data online right now, um, children know the social, the racial hierarchy by mm -hmm. the age of four. Yep, absolutely. The, 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 the doll test. Mm -hmm. We know Disney and, and the, 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 some of these cartoons that we watch, I'm gonna say them in particular, mm -hmm. but just some of the programming that we watch on TV, 
it tells the subconscious who's on top and who's on the bottom. And so when yeah. black kids are put, when dolls are yeah. put in front of black kids and white kids, the black kids and the white kids agree that the white doll is better. Right. That's because it's ingrained, it's in the social fabric, it's in the religion, it's in, how, it's, it's in the imagery and how we're shown. Mm -hmm. Like I work with children, I ask children all the time, what do you, black children, yeah. what do you think about black people? What do you think we've done? And most of them say, most of them think this, we were in slavery, yep. Martin Luther King got us out, and Michael Jordan's greatest, and that's all they know. Mm. They don't know that we invented the, we, they don't know that we invented the air condition. <laughs> They don't know that we invent that we uh, we say uh, George Washington Carver is America's greatest scientist. They think it's Einstein. He didn't prove anything. It was Carver. They don't know that we invented all these different things in America. They don't know that uh, uh, the, these things about us. And so the fact that they don't know these things shows you mm -hmm. that that that's the racism that's, that America is because wow. we don't know the black people who built America, mm. and that's a problem. Well, mm -hmm. We appreciate that you are out educating our youngsters. Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 We would like to thank our guests, Dewan Brown, Cindy Wallace, and Elise Cizek for sharing their thoughts on our Black People Can We Be Racist right. show today. Yes. We yes. definitely want to do this again because I feel like we just got started. Yeah, yeah. yeah. everybody wants to come yeah. back. Yeah. So thanks for everyone watching us and at home. And don't forget that you can catch us anywhere. Just download the Fox Soul TV app from the App Store, Google Play, Fire TV, or Apple TV. And of course, thank you to our amazing studio audience. <laughs> they were amazing. If you are in the LA area and you want to be in our audience, you can email the audience at foxsoul.tv. And make sure that you just keep tuning in to Fox Soul. Thanks for watching us. So glad Up next is yeah. Dish Nation. Yeah. And then keep it locked in for some performances on the Tommy Mac Late Show. Up next. Thank you, Gordon. Thanks, everyone. Thank right. you. Thank you.